Some after not so much your uh, what you're interested in United Future, mm. but just your predictions of is that ever possible? A national oh, I, green, think um, uh, I think it's unlikely. Yeah. Um, I think I think that um, uh, the differences between them are too significant fundamentally. And you think that'll th always be the case? Yeah, I do, um, because I think that's that's the ethos of the Greens. Mm. Having said that, I think that the sort of cooperation agreement that ha mm. has been in place for the last couple of years around specific issues is possible. Right. And it seems I haven't been close to the current one because I'm not directly involved in it, but it seems to have worked pretty well and I think that that's the way to go forward. I think one of the things about MMP that what's well, why I favour its retention incidentally is yeah. that it has allowed you know the big the big fear was tails would wag dogs. I don't think that's actually happened. I think MMP with perhaps the exception of the first coalition, what MMP has allowed smaller parties to do is to play a role around the issues that are of concern to them. Mm. And if they've been able to either be part of a government process or to interact with a government on particular issues, they've been able to make far more progress than just simply sitting on the opposition benches. But it must worry you that every one of them just gets hammered afterwards, gets punished. Yeah, and, and, and I think that's, uh, that's um, and I can probably bear the testimony to that more than right. most, but um, I think that... Um, that's but it's not unique, your experience. No, it's um, not, but yeah. I, think, I think it's part of a, a, a political maturity process. Uh, one of the things that people said when MMP came along is we like the diversity it's going to provide. Yeah. Now that we've got diversity, um, people actually hanker for the days when they had a two-party system. Hmm. It's rather bizarre. I mean, it is quite amazing that back in, what, 96, nearly, I don't know, four out of ten voters, two yeah. out of five voters mm. voted for minor parties. Well, as and recent now, as 2002. And 2002. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And uh, in the last election, mm. I think it was more like one in ten. Yeah, and, and, uh, and well, I suspect I know, this, this election, that, this election yeah. will, be, will be similar. And in part, and I have to say this, one or two of the small parties have contributed to that. I think New Zealand First's reputation has been, uh, or sorry, its contribution to the New Zealand political scene over the last 20 years has been fundamentally disastrous. It's all the wrong things about small parties. I, I think that where parties have been constructive, and I'd include ourselves, and I'd include the Greens in this respect mm. too, probably, and the Māori Party I think would be the three, mm. I would say have tried to play the game reasonably and fairly, um, you get very little credit for what you achieve. I'm always amazed that when the government does something that people don't like, people come to me and say, why do you support that? And somehow it's your fault for what they've, what they've done. When they achieve things that are popular, they don't come to you, which are your policies, they don't come to you and say, oh, that was great. So yeah. I think that's part of our lack of political maturity. I have wondered whether there's a culture or at least a, a mode of operation for the major parties, and particularly probably the Labor, last Labor government, of not really playing a very harmonious role with minor parties, of doing just that, of trying to blame them mm. for the problems and trying to starve them of attention on the victories. Um, I think there's a lot in that. And yeah. I think one of the striking differences between Helen Clark and John Key, and I've got huge respect for both for different reasons, Helen always worked on the basis of we need 61 votes. Yeah. And once we've got 61, that's it. We'll win 61-59 if we have to. Mm. Key says, well, 61's a starting point. If we can get 70 or 80, let's go for it. And I think that's a striking difference between the two. So in the, in the Labour government days, it was very much bunker mentality around we've got the numbers, sure. we can do things, and I think what you say was, was true. In this government, it's a more open environment, but I still think there's elements of uh, um, if we were running this by ourselves, here's what we'd have done. We've only had to play, you know, do these things to, to sort of pander to the needs of partners. But again, I think that process is changing. You know, now, I forget the number, but it will be 80% of the parliament would have been elected under MMP. And I think some of those old first-past yeah. post attitudes that have hung around for a while are starting to, to, to go away. OK, sure. Now, we normally ask the uh, MPs that come along here to say something about social issues. Mm. Um, students seem to be particularly interested in things like the purchase age of alcohol, mm. as you can imagine, yep. being around that age, about um, mm. drugs. And I think mm. your views are fairly well known on some of these, but let's just go through them. Okay. Um, purchase age, what should I, be? I, I've favour retaining the age at 18. Okay. I don't favour a split age, I think it's unworkable. And I think that reducing, oh, sorry, increasing the age to 20 is going to create more problems than it will resolve. And actually the age is not the issue. Okay, the that's... circumstances under which alcohol is made available. Sure. So what about, what about price? Some people are talking a lot more about getting rid of uh, cheap booze. Look, uh, I think that um, the, the pricing mechanism is one that the, the, the tax system addresses, frankly. Mm. And I don't think you can say to people you can't incentivise or you can't promote 
Um, so I'm, if there was to be a price change, I think that the most effective ones over the years have been tax related. Okay, so can government do anything about some of the alcohol problems we've got? Oh yes, I think it can, and I think that a number of the measures in the current legislation will achieve that. Um, I, I support a lot of the changes in terms of the regulatory environment, mm -hmm. in terms of giving communities far more say over how licences are approved, mm -hmm. in terms of um, some of the responsibilities that are put on parents and functional organisers, for instance. I think they're, they're okay. quite big steps forward. But I'm very sceptical, and I've worked in the alcohol field now for mm -hmm. long before I came to Parliament, mm -hmm. I'm very sceptical of things that look good. Sure. Um, so, you know, you put the age up, that's going to solve all the problems. But it, uh, and it doesn't, so what do you do then? But yeah. isn't, couldn't you say the same thing about your policies on drug um, well, prohibition? I think, I think the difference is that, that, that in the case of alcohol, the genie is well and truly out of the bottle. It's been okay. out of the bottle for... A bit, so to speak, for a very large number of years. So you're saying maybe there is an inconsistency between how the state regulates alcohol to some and drugs, extent, I think, but I, I think it's just a no, what, I'm, what I'm really saying is that it's the classic, if we knew then what we knew now, we might have taken a much tougher regulatory um, response to alcohol at the formation stage right. of this country. Um, that, that situation's moved on. I don't think that then says, and this is where I have... So prohibition and alcohol has been abandoned. Yeah, so but I, I think um, the argument that then, and I'm not arguing for prohibition of alcohol, but I think the argument that then says because we have problems with alcohol that, that relate to the way in which we regulate it, we should now effectively open up the drug scene to the same sorts of potential problems. That's what I have a real difficulty with. I think we can learn from our mistakes and our experiences. And I think that uh, um, in the current report that the Law Commission has given us on the Misuse of Drugs Act, for instance, there's a huge amount of very good stuff. There's 144 separate recommendations, and I would expect that the bulk of those will be adopted by the government, and I think they should be. Okay. What about gay marriage? Well, I, look, I think that um, the issue really comes down to access to rights, uh, and that's property rights, that's um, a whole range of legal recognitions. Which, which our Relationships Act yeah. gives us at the moment. Um, whether it be a marriage or a civil union, um, I think the civil union legislation, which is, I must say one of my big regrets in politics was ever opposing that. Okay. I think that's worked pretty well, and I'm quite happy with the way things but are. But it, it was always a bit of a half measure, wasn't it? That well, I think that was part of the problem. It was, it was put up to be a half measure. Mm. In fact, if you look at what it does alongside the Marriage Act, it's, it's more than a half measure. Okay. Three quarters measure. I think it's probably close to about 80, 90 per cent. So I'm, I'm therefore quite relaxed about leaving things as they are. I think the important thing, and that's why I, I voted for the relationships legislation, was the, is, was the legal recognitions that flow from that. There are some other issues that we need to address, however. Um, the, the 1955 Adoption Act is hopelessly out of date in a whole range of circumstances. So you seem to support and I think, of I think that. that needs to be reviewed. Okay. And I think that needs to be reviewed uh, independently. Uh, and I think Parliament, and perhaps the Law Commission is the best body to do that, Parliament then would need to pick up where it's at. I think the Guardianship Act similarly needs review, and there might be some aspects of the Care of Children Act okay. that need review. So be clear, against gay marriage, in favour of civil unions, uh, in favour of gay adoption, in basic terms? Well, I, I, wouldn't, I, would, I would say um, certainly in favour of civil unions, um, open-minded on gay adoption, um, and at this stage don't see necessarily the distinction between civil unions and, and, and marriage. In okay. other words, I think that marriages and civil unions are fundamentally the same thing. Okay. Any questions from the floor, especially about issues of you know, these social issues? Yes. Oh, we've got, we've got uh, Andrew at the back. I'm Peter. What, can, what question can I ask? About social issues, about, um, or any others. I mean, it's your choice. But can I also ask you, are they... Have they in the past years done the rebuild from with the law commission of the misuse of drugs at mm -hmm. review? So the misuse of drugs at yep. review. The, um, re the report came to me in at the end of when a couple of months ago, and the government's working its way through the recommendations. There are 144 of them. Um, most of them we will accept. There will be some we won't accept, uh, but the decisions will be made early next year on that. But okay. means, would that require any new changes to the legislation? Yes, there will be changes to the, there will be a new Misuse of Drugs Act next year. Yes. And then we've got Abe Gray from Normal at the back. It's quite clear that 